Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Tier No, the last of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mokalova. Alright, now, we've got to choose another SCOTUS nominee. Now, it's March 1st, 1973. We can look at the CIA and their stuff over here, but right now, because we're playing as a centrist MCS right now, we'll take a look at the Supreme Court. There are six conservatives and three liberals. And I believe the last time it was a, a conservative that passed away. So let's go with a liberal option and see what happens. Five and four, that's fairly balanced. So, last time we went pretty far, as far as we could go and finish off all this stuff with a shining city on the hill. We want to do this, but if I remember correctly from the last video, we need to please the right a little bit more. And by pleasing the right, I mean, that means we can piss off the left. Then again, that doesn't make too much sense. It kind of does, but whatever. Uh, let's see. Oh, the triad complete. Sea, land, and air. Uh, I don't remember which ones I read already, but I'll just go ahead and, we'll go ahead and do sea, air, and land. In addition to the blunt instruments of state craft, as embodied aircraft carriers and nuclear armaments, the Navy has set forth a proposal to refine its existing tactical demolitions and reconnaissance teams into simple crack units of commandos. They are to be capable of operating independently and discreetly across all environments on the harshest missions facing the U.S. The training will be grueling, the missions confidential, and recognition will be almost non-existent. But with this force, America will never be found without a means to strike at its enemies. And one of the comments from yesterday included that, uh, continue paying off your debts? Well... We'll do the best we can, but with 18 billion, that's a lot of debt. But a more balanced court. Um, if you want to read about this, please go ahead. This happens whenever you have a relatively balanced court as well. So, operation success, good. And we uphold the Founding Fathers' ideals. Whether we interpret them any way we want. Cool. Hope you guys are having a pretty good day. Let's keep going on and on and on. In which, wow, we have 80 NPP senators. That is just, that is nice. That is very nice. But, let's see, influential, influential, everyone's still pleased, so, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. Let's go ahead and read about the try complete. With a credible air and land-based deterrent and plans to introduce a sub-base equivalent in the Navy, we may now have three distinct systems by which we can deliver nuclear destruction to our enemies. If the bombers don't get through, then our missiles will pierce the enemy skies. If the missiles fly off target, then our subs will be close to ensure a hit. It'll take far too much effort for the Germans or Japanese to be able to destroy all of our means of nuclear warfare, ensuring the eternal eff efficacy of America's nuclear deterrent. Awesome. And let's keep going with a lot of these uh, support technologies. Which I still don't like that we can't build any more civvies. Uh, you know, when TNO 2 comes out, because obviously all the technology is already done for this, which is actually pretty smart that the devs already did this. So we have all the way up until 1990. Jeez, I wasn't even alive in 1990, but that's really cool. But they, at least they have everything already finished, which is nice. The try complete. Nice. I probably get, hopefully get an event from this stuff too. Covert support. Eyes in the sky. Let's do eyes in the sky. A happy side effect of our burgeoning investment in space exploration and development is that our satellite network is now large enough that most parts of the Earth can reasonably expect to have an American satellite orbiting overhead at some point of the day. Weather permitting, having a set of eyes hovering above all parts of the Earth opens up some interesting possibilities on keeping eyes on our enemies and their nuclear programs. Nothing like a little bit of spying and let's go suppress some Republicans. Cool. And then the Democrats are of course next. Got a lot of experience. Too bad there's only so much limited tech you can do for the CIA. That'd be cool if someone was working in a semi to make the CIA, or even just Intel oper operations and agencies, a little bit more interesting, or at least more, a little more useful. Because I like getting the extra political power from it, but, you know, I wish there was just a little bit more we could do with this stuff. But, eyes in the sky. <sighs> Thank you very much. Operator 6, good job, good job. And let's go ahead and suppress some Democrats. Nothing like suppressing political parties. Nothing like it. Up next, let's do covert support. One happy coincidence of our efforts to grow the Navy's commando units and our development of subs built for endurance and stealth is that we now have a potent force that can raise heck throughout the co-prosperity sphere's maritime periphery and the means by which to deliver them to their targets undetected. The opportunity is surely too good to pass up if the budget permits. And this point, technology doesn't really matter. I don't really want to stop the game just so we can keep go getting our focuses done. Because we're about, ah, we're about halfway through that. But man, oh, look at that, that's pretty good too. So all of Alaska, almost all of the Northeast is part of the NPP. Um, oh, the vast majority of the Midwest is a part of the NPP, and even though Indiana is 1-1. One one, the Deep South, you know, they used to call it Solid South. It's definitely not solid anymore with Texas being uh, RD, and then a lot of it being mixed, and a lot of it just being all NPP, so. And the West Coast is pretty mixed as well. It's pretty darn mixed. And then covert support. Nice. 
followed up with pride in her fleet. Words and numbers on paper might mean the world to military planners in the Pentagon, but the public has yet to be convinced that the new Navy can shake off the malaise of its failures. The Navy agrees and set a widespread program of public outreach and media events to dazzle the masses. A goodwill tour by the Navy Task Force, public lectures by senior personnel, enlisting Hollywood and the music industry. Clearly, the Navy has suddenly discovered a remarkable enthusiasm for marketing. Perhaps we should indulge them? Absolutely. And cut that down. It doesn't mean anything, though. This means a little bit more for the civilian budget. Uh, suppress the Yaki's intensify volunteers. It doesn't matter. We've got about 10 days left for the military police, which is nice. Uh, actually, you know what? Pride in our fleet, yeah. I wonder if we're going to create the song. Was it in the Navy? Yeah, I think it was in the Navy. So, after military police, that one, well, let's go ahead and grab some Signal Company 3s. More initiative is kind of nice. Hmm. Yeah, not bad. Alright, let's keep going on. With Pride in our fleet. Followed up with duck and cover. For all of our efforts to improve the effectiveness of our nuclear deterrent, we have to assume that Germany and Japan are doing the same. It's a sign of a sane world. Nuclear war is only deterred by having all sides be capable of deterring each other. And it forces the insanity of having to meaningfully, meaningfully having to think about, prepare for, and survive a war that will destroy civilization as we know it. We must do it. The stakes are too high to believe otherwise. Pretty much. Let's continue slashing down because 30-some billion is way too much for us. Logistics seem pretty darn nice as well. But yeah, I mean, there's really no point to stop technology. I mean, technology doesn't really mean too much. At least poverty is slightly getting better. And actually, we're improving our nuclear stockpile. This, this is no Glen route, but at least getting uh, some more nuclear technology is really nice. The left and center are dissatisfied as they're more pacifists. Oh, well. They'll get used to it. Red, white, and blue water. Oh, after we get some nuclear technology for this stuff. Cool. Ally class. Very nice. Armed with carrier battle groups, ballistic missile subs, and the SEAL units, the U.S. Navy is reborn as a force that can contest the Japanese and German fleets on the high seas, operating the cloak and dagger machinations of the Cold War periphery, and assure America's vengeance in the event of the unthinkable. Freedom can once again stretch from the shores of America to the far reaches of the Atlantic and the Pacific, and it's time we remind the world that the U.S. Navy is a force to be reckoned with. More fleet coordination plus 2%, and the OFAN grows a little more unified, which is really good because we get more PP and stuff like that, and people like us more, except the Japanese. Let us satisfy the more jingoist elements of the party. Nice. And then this one, well, I'll get more 100, political, 100 more political power, which is actually pretty good as well. Very cool. Oh, that debt. Ah, MCS just loves the debt. That's alright. I, I hope Toolbox Siri comes out soon. At least the time it's recording. Hopefully it'll come out soon. Uh, and we displease the center and the left a little bit, but they're still pleased. 29.52 is... We're still really good. Still ridiculously good. Well, let's strengthen pro-American sentiment, shall we? Cool. That's a little bit ahead of time for us. Let's grab that one. Nice. So after this, let's do a rule of the waves. Why not? With an unprecedented naval buildup underway, America faces the very real possibility that recruitment will not keep pace with shipbuilding, with the Navy running out of sailors before ships. President Smith has proposed reviving the World War II era proposal to establish a woman accepted for a volunteer emergency service waves program in order to free male sailors for service duty by calling on women to fill shore duty. There will be resistance to reviving a wartime mobilization program in peacetime to say nothing of the involvement of women in the armed forces, but then again, a female president seemed impossible only a few years ago. Cool. Anything else? This seems like, oh, the conclusion of the battle for Russia is minus 800 some days. Whatever, it's all right. Until analysis, we can't do that. And when's the next technology done? In about two weeks. We're ready for anything. The armed forces have the tech, the training, and the tenacity to not only fight as a nu not fight a nuclear war, but to win one. With our reforms, the American military stands resolute in the face of the challenges of the next decade, and it's time we make sure people know it. Too bad we can't create power armor suits just in case nuclear warfare actually does happen. Instead of fighting the Chinese in Alaska, we'll probably be fighting the Japanese in Alaska, and maybe the Germans in, in England. So, that'd be really cool. TNO Fallout when? God, that'd be so cool. Or TNO, Equestria at War when? Now that would be pretty darn cool. Alright, let's keep going. Oh, uh, sure. Advanced side batteries, might as well. Military austerity? Nope. No austerity for you. And after Signal Company 3s, we're going to grab Scout Helicopter 1s. Yeah, we got that one down. Oh, there you go. Cool. Ready for anything. So now that we've finished that side, I'm going to go back to the left. We've finished to the right. We've got the left. And we'll do a quiet revolution. 
America is beginning to enter the so-called new era of having women employed in the workforce. Previously, women in the workforce were usually young, unmarried, and drifted from job to job with no real desire or concern over choosing a career. Most women were expected to get married and raise children while their husbands provided for them. As they had no intention of choosing a lifelong career or profession, many did not attend college. Now, the status quo is being challenged as more and more women begin seeking higher education and white-collar jobs. This quiet revolution, so-called because of how the change has gone relatively unnoticed by society at large, represents a fundamental change in how women view themselves and their place in the world overall. President Smith believes this change is to be for the better. To encourage it even further, she plans to implement legislation which would press public and private colleges across the nation to take affir affirmative action for young women. Academic base will begin to improve, but won't sit well with the traditionalists in the party. Well, we'll see what happens. Still okay? And I know I'll just let technology go on, but like I said, it doesn't really matter at this point in the game. I don't think I've ever played up until this late in the game before. Maybe once, but I don't think I have. But that doesn't really matter since we're probably not going to end up in war. But since we're down here, we might as well expand the Redstone Arsenal. America's finest scientists have spent years devising the latest advancement and long-range missile weaponry at the Redstone Arsenal, preparing to fight a war with technology rather than blood. Protecting the American way of life first depends and foremost on the ability to deter our enemies from an attack on the heartland, and to that end we will expand the scope of the Redstone Arsenal's operations with a budget allocation to match. The Southwest will also appreciate our uh, efforts to boost local employment. Cost us some money in the military factory. Make us more popular in the Southwest. Even though it says an uh, influx of new jobs will make us more popular in the state. Well, the Southwest is bigger than just one state. So, um, other than that, we finished everything over here. And that means we've literally finished everything over here. We still have the Iranian Civil War, which we don't care about right now. And a new republic, which we don't care about. We can still take all this stuff, which might, wouldn't be too bad. But I do want to get at least um, the home the Japanese islands back. So, if you want to read about this, please go right ahead. And I'll scroll down. Oh, as well, down here. Cool. Transcript of Senator Strom Thurmond's SCFWC speech. Senator Thurmond, now let me be perfectly clear. I have nothing but the utmost respect for President Smith. She is a friend and a colleague in the Senate, among the first to represent her state's true interests when the Republicans and Democrats no longer did. That she became the first Madam President in her history serves as an inspiring reminder that anyone, even those of the fair sex, can lead the free world if they worked hard and did their best. And he went to get some water. He also continues with, which brings me to my one complaint against her. You've no doubt already heard of the president's dress as of late, whether from radio, print, TV, or even a word of mouth. They told of the so-called welfare for the American people and the prosperity it will bring for everyone. But don't be fooled, the president spoke of handouts in all but name. <clears throat> Our grandpappies always tell us that the man who taught to fish will live a full life till he got old and gray, and that a man who knows only how to take fish from others will take, away, take his way to another grave. We have failed will have failed the founders indeed of america turns from a nation of fishers to a nation of fish takers that may do for this may that may do for the reds and their misguided allies but will it do for us will will it do for hard-working americans like you and i must it do for our daughters the new generation of american citizens and who will soon fill your shoes 20 years from now and nurture the next audience applause as dispersed no's are shouted out <laughs> cool everyone's so pleased everyone still loves us everyone loves us and no one can say otherwise. <laughs> Too bad the national debt keeps getting bigger. Come on, GDP, grow faster, grow faster. Uh, what else can we do? Um, political landscape? They've collapsed, so um, this stuff doesn't really matter. MPP unity? I mean, it really doesn't matter. I, I, maybe in the next year, we can get even more senators for MPP. I kind of doubt it. I'm sure a lot of the senators are actually going to be um, up for a re-election. So, it is what it is. Fighting tyranny since 1776. So we'll try to get the ports back as fast as possible. And it, since it is an election year. The occupation. I think this happens pretty much every year I think. So if you want to read about this please go right ahead. Maybe we should focus on real issues instead of this nonsense. Cool. Nice. So let's see what else we have here. Nope. Nothing there. And if preparing domestic prep. I've already read through all these before. So if you'd like to read about this please go right ahead. Cool. And here's the rest of the paragraph. New decisions allowing us to prepare our country for the fight against the Japanese mess will be unlocked. I've already read through these, but I really want to get Hawaii back, so. Oh, look at that. Look at reserves. Where do we cut? We we cut it down a little bit, but with what? was it's, it's zero down here, I thought. Okay, well, whatever. Whatever, we got two leaks left for uh, that one. Not bad. Domestic preparedness. Very nice. Brothers in arms. Actually, how, how united are we in terms of the OFN? That's a good question to ask, actually. We are... Oh, if you want to read about that, please go right ahead. We are have very high unity, which is pretty good, pretty good. At least the MPP fights for America. Nice. Military austerity, nope. Signal companies are very nice as well. And field hospital threes. Cool. If you want to read about Feed the Beast, there you go. 
get more political power, unlock decisions for building military factories, which is okay. I kind of prefer Savio, to be honest, but it is what it is. Yeah, we definitely can't cut down the debt in this campaign. If I were to play Bennett and actually be successful, then we could definitely cut down the debt, I'm more than certain, so. But we're not, and it is what it is. We got one day's left, very nice. Three day, three week focus. Oh, if you want to hear about that, please go right ahead. Raw industrial might, yeah. Raw industrial might, because this will be better in the long term, hopefully. There you go. Cool. And cogs of the machine. Factory output goes up by only 2%. And here you go, here's this focus if you'd like to read it too. So I'm just, I'm just, I'm going through this very quickly just because I want to get the, the islands back. It is 74, so we should have election season starting soon, right? The Senate elections, so. And let's grab this one. Attack helicopter company twos. Annual revenue, 140 billion. Expenditures, 100, what, 158 billion. Okay, that makes sense. Feeding the beast. The beast is hungry. Ooh, you know what? We can, we can do this. And you know what? Screw it. We'll raise unity between the NPP right now. I like that we can actually see how much we have in terms of unity. I actually really like that. Russian militarization. Now we're okay. Now we can close out of that. And now we're at 29.7. So we went up by 1.5. Awesome. Everyone's so pleased. Cog is the machine and pump the gas. Oh, let's do this one first. Technology's not bad. There you go. Well done, gentlemen. More PP. Great. And pump the gas. In which we get two more military factories to focus on fighting above ground. There we go. Cool. MCS is going to lead us into war against Japan. Or maybe get the, the ports back, which actually would help our GDP. San Francisco and I think it was San Diego? San Francisco or LA. I can't remember. I think it was LA and San Francisco. Which kind of sucks if America actually did lose that. I, to a degree, it doesn't make sense, but it kind of does. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Cool. And next technology will be done in about a month. Not bad. 650 billion. Never enough. Rosie the radio operator. Okay, yeah, I could probably do this one. Uh, the president will attempt to pass this bill through Congress. Nice. Because I do want to go on to Tokyo. That'll be good. Women's Occupational Military Equality Normalization Act in Congress. The Women Act. Okay, the Women Act. Cool. Russian militarization. Now we're good. We're pretty good about that. Oh, oh, uh, hey, it's your monthly or bi yearly Republican suppression moments. Nice. Marginalized and displeased. Rosie the radio operator. Cool. And there we go. Oh, we have more here? Oh, what is this? Aerial equipment. Uh, civilian factory construction speed. Focus on fuel. Oh, great job, guys. Great job. Democrat time? Democrat time. Air? Uh, that seems okay. Civilian factory construction speed is for pretty much everything. It doesn't really matter. I wish it was for civvies, but whatever. Cool. Let's talk about the next one. Or at least I'll show you guys the next focus that we need to do to start talks with Japan. Fund the Skunk Works. Improve or focus on military research. So we need at least one of these. And then go to Eyes on the Port. Do we need to do... Yeah, just one of these. Operating success. Great. Hear all, see all. See all, hear all. Cool. I've got three days left. We only have 697 civvies and 23 millies. So, a woman's place. The White House of the Quarters. Yeah, there you go. If you're wondering about that, please go ahead. Oh, the Ardies look a little better in southern states. That's not nice. Uh, actually... Oh, you know, I'll read this one. After securing his passage in the Senate through a bipartisan coalition, President Smith signed the Women's Occupational Military Equality Normalization Act with resounding applause. The act bars armed forces from discriminating against potential recruits on the basis of sex. This grants women the legal right to serve in all non-combative military occupations. Upon signing the act, Smith remarked, It's always seemed to me a peculiar contradiction, that a woman may command the armed forces of this country, yet not serve in them. I'm therefore most pleased to be resolving this discrepancy today. It's truly a historic moment, and as a woman, it is a deeply personal moment as well. In signing this act, I look forward to the day when my brave sisters will play their part in reclaiming our temporarily occupied territories. Cheers to our fighting girls. And... Yeah, we can do that one, yeah, that's fine. We're still looking okay, and the RDs are looking... They're still collapsed. Great. No one wants the RDs. Well, hold on. I thought 30 was a cap. Now it's 30.2. The left wing is irrelevant, but they're happy. They're happy being irrelevant. And ready for battle. Cool. 
Are this, is this supposed to be united here? Look, there's supposed to be, there's a line here. Cool, we get more political power. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. Very cool. We you got about a week left. Not too bad. What are we still building? Anti-air, huh? I just feel so limited without being able to build stuff here. Yeah, civilian spending? Nope. Nope. Thank you. Come again. Ready for battles? And we'll do eyes on the port. Cool. Technology? Two weeks left for attack helicopters. 3.2. Wow. I mean, yeah, not bad. Also, I do want to let you know that part of the video in the last last video was trimmed out just because when the unifying song came on or the super event for the free Russian territory after the unified Russia, uh, it got me copyright claims. I can't, you know, I really don't like copyright claims, so I had to trim it out just a little bit. Just a little bit. So, ready for battle and attack helicopter companies. Very nice. There you go. Scout helicopter company twos. And as on the port, if you want to read about that, please go right ahead. More decryption for two years, so that'd be good. Uh, maybe we'll do Brothers in Arms eventually. Maybe when we're doing other focuses, we could fire the people, but that's alright. Community, what's that? Community action? Manage productivity. Oh, that's not a bad idea, too. Rally the center. Because we're a little more unified, more war support. Actually, that wouldn't be bad. Extremists? Let's do the center. Because they could help us with war support. Because it's looking really bad right now. And yeah, let's, you know, let's try the extremists. Why not? Actually, and now we're 31 and a half. That's not bad. Cool. Next X will be done in four days. And we'll improve our Navy's strength. We'll play like that. Naval strength. Cool. And then if you want to read about Fort Alcatraz, please go right ahead. California gets three coastal and land forts in the state. Nice. Yeah, it is part of San Francisco. Oh, if you want to read about improved academic base, please go right ahead. But instead of... Oh, now it's already good too. This is something to be celebrated. Nice. Secondary schooling. Thank you. Gave us 5% more research speed, output, and production efficiency cap. And so it was... Oh, it was LA. I was pretty sure it was LA and San Francisco. Oh, there's Oakland? Oh, it's Oakland over there. Santa Rosa. California's a big state. I really don't know the geography of California that well. Thank you. And up next, if you want to read about this one... For all these focuses, if you want to read about them, please just go ahead. I'm going to stop saying that from here on out. Battleship Diplomacy. Docking up plus 2%. Not much. But that's alright. And here is See All, Hear All. Which you get more political power. California gets more land forts. And Counterintelligence Report SF slash LA 1974-25. Cool. More torpedoes. Very awesome. How's Europe looking? How, how, what's going on over here? Wow, Borman is looking very old. Wow. And Himmler's hanging out. You guys, I don't think everyone's already finished their focus right here. Maybe some China. No, even China did it. And the Nanjing Fallout. Consumer goods minus, minus 5%, huh? Okay. And then, here I'll see you all. Cool. We seriously didn't have elections this year. Do we get elections in 76? I don't know. That'd be kind of cool if we didn't. And the MCS literally becomes a dictator. That'd be kind of cool, actually. Cool. So after this one, actually, tech will be done in two weeks. Uh, on to Tokyo. That'll be good. We should demand a meeting with Tokyo to finally reclaim our rifle land. Nothing can stop us now. The treaty port negotiations will go right on ahead. Great. Operational success. Well done, gentlemen. If you argue about this one, please go ahead. This happens all the time when we try to get back to the port. So counter intel report. There you go. We see all. Anything else over here? Military security? Nope. Nope. 19 billion. It's getting worse, guys. It's getting worse. With minus 0.5% uh, GDP on, or minus 0.5% annual debt interest. I'm not sure how we can do anything here, but whatever. Better field hospitals. Cool. Whew. Not great. And then on to Tokyo. So then we'll probably do Brothers in Arms. Because I would like to invest in our allies. Even though I do want to do We Fight for America. Destabling Pacifism. Recruitment Outreach. Crank up the draft. Ready for war. Yeah. It's not bad. But we'll do Brothers in Arms. So. Investing in allies. It's always good to invest in some allies. And we've got about a week left before we can do that. Wow, we've already gone ahead and almost built up all the anti-air in the country. Jesus Christ. We built a lot. Hey, we have modern research facilities. That's pretty cool. 
2018, nothing for agriculture. Poverty is slowly getting... We might be able to get that done by the end of the campaign. Maybe, maybe not, but we'll see what happens. Actually, industrial expertise will go up. Probably not army professionalism or nuclear stockpile, but that's all right. Brothers in arms. It's a little bit ahead of time. Cold War damage doctrine. Everyone to build up, please go ahead. And you know what? Let's do this. And I'm going to go ahead and save for us, just because this could go very well, or this could go very, very poorly. And actually, whenever we do this to get Hawaii back and the islands, um, I usually make a save, just in case. So, And I sometimes have to go through it several different times. So. Only minus 50% stuff okay so let's propose a japanese summits location go for a carrier we'll lose more political power but thus investing more we want to invest as much pp as possible so they have minus 25 invested political power we invested 25 propose some location we'll take the japanese offer oh all right so now we're a little bit more balanced we're still in the lead they took took 25 political power the summit is set making history one step at a time great all right let's go and do this as well Naval stuff. Ooh, that's a little bit ahead of time as well. They demand oil, brothers in arms. Uncle Sam is a present for you. Nice. And let's go ahead and grab down under. Yes. We're going to grow a little bit more unified. Uh, give as much oil as we can. I don't know why we get we get political power. Japan's currently in the lead. That doesn't make any sense. But well, we want to give them as much political power as possible. The Japanese want more. Terminate the treaty. I'll move on. Except their new demands. There you go. We're currently discussing the first clause, which is nice. Hopefully they say yes, complete success. The negotiations worked. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And enter the embargo with much push for favorable terms. Push for favorable terms, why not? Nobody's in the lead now. Not Japan, which is good. And now Japan is in the lead again. God dang it. Off return. We'll take what we can get. Yeah, I'll do that one. We'll try to be all smiles around. And now we're in the lead. Very good. Happy 1975. I've definitely not gone this far before. The third clause. So far, so good. The third clause. Oh, uh, you know what? You know what? Screw it. I'm going to save here too. Why not? You get to see how many times I save sometimes to get this done. Because sometimes you have to just do it like repeatedly going back from an earlier save. But unilateral demilitarization. Oh boy. Free ports and demilitarized islands or secure relations. Demilitarized Hawaii. We'll try that one. We're currently in the lead. Down under. Oh, there you go. If you want to bet that, please go ahead. I'd rather that's like once or twice already, so. Their GDP and factories will increase while our GDP will decrease. And eh, whatever. The dockyards of these guys. Our third eye. Let's do the OFN. Are we there yet with... Uh, they're still very high. OFN. Cool. Uh, uh, these other countries will get one more city, including us, actually. That's not bad. That's not bad, actually. Japanese response. The cause of peace demands it. All right. We'll see what happens. Nobody's currently in the lead. Those islands gotta become American again. Come on, come on. No agreement in sight. Oh, the tree seems one step further. Oh boy. Well, that's not good. OFN and Northern Brothers. Come on, let's get something done. Tree ports return. The end of an era. Cool. All right, so not we didn't get everything we wanted. We get significant oil concessions, which we lose consumer goods, factories, fuel gain per oil, and fuel capacity, in which they get that stuff, which is fine. We get a lot of support for a great victory. We're more out of cities, but now we have more millies. Look at that. First time again. We actually got them back. One more proposition. Round two. Okay. Well. I guess we'll save again, just because we can. Okay, game. Thank you. Because now we can build up cities here. Yay! This was part of the plan. We only want these places back because we can build up cities. And thank you. There we go. And there we go as well. Round two. All right. So what do we got here? Light aircraft, we can grab some of this stuff. Jet interceptors, jet fighters. Demilitarized zones of both Hawaii. Measure negotiations. Exchange Panama Canal. 
All right, so this one is going to take a while. I'm sorry for all the saving, guys. I really do apologize about it. It is what it is. But I want to get as much as we can from them because we gave them a lot of oil. So, unconditional surrender. We're going to lose 100 political power. That's fine with us. We're currently in the lead. They've got to say yes, right? They've got to say yes. We gave them so much oil. Northern Brothers, nice. Approved. Failed. Let's approve it. Our new friend. Thirty United, cool. The handshake. I did the wrong one. My bad. Military austerity. We get that, that stuff down, and then ocean pacified. Peace in her time. Look at that. We had daring to dream with a new dawn. More political power and stuff like that. All right, first time through, we got Hawaii. We don't have any civvies to speak of, but hey, we got them. We actually got it. And it's weird. It's 75, so... Yeah, not bad. We actually got Hawaii back. And they're probably led by MPP senators. Yeah, that's right. Benjamin Franklin Dillingham II and Thomas Gill. Welcome done. Or well done. Cool. Well. I'm not exactly sure who's leading that group. Let's see. Let's see. What happens when we finish every single focus we have? Our old ally? Cool. Um, There's really not much here left. It feels kind of like empty here at the end of the MCS run, but I do want to see who gets elected in 77. If, if anyone does, because we, we didn't even have the Senate elections. So, this is very weird, where we have Hawaii with us, and they have their two senators, and four electoral votes. votes. But we have only 98 senators, so what happens then? This is the latest I've ever played in TNO. Our old ally, cool. Best of luck. Cool. Is ready for anything? Yeah, everyone is so happy. What happens if we do suppress the Yakiites? They're infuriated. We really pissed them off. Oh, I forgot about this too. And Semper, Semper Lieber. Cool, my bad about that. My bad. Support, suppress the Yakiites. Oh, they're... Oh, they didn't like that. Significant and satisfied. And with the Southerners... Yeah, they're happy. They're fine. They don't care. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. MCS, I, as much as I want to, you know, say... I want to say this about MCS's run. I took a while to get it, actually, up to this point. Because, you know, there's like an hour, two, three off screen just getting to her. But I hope there's a little bit more love shown for her. For this, for her route. Just because... Actually, well, look at that. 52% is actually really nice. Um, I don't know. I just wish there was more. I know it... We don't start off with MCS, and you gotta wait till like 68 to even get her, or 69, but like, I wanna see if we could get more stuff for her. That'd be really cool if we could. I want as much content for every president as possible, but maybe some sub mod Sunday will make a, some stuff for MCS. Hey, we're political power, even though we don't really need it anymore. But everyone's almost pleased, except the fascists. They're satisfied. Let me do that. They're influential. So wait, that went up with influential and pleased, huh? For that one we just did. Let's see what we do with the docks of Darwin. We'll try to go through every single focus that we can right now, too, so. And if you're still watching, thank you. I do appreciate it. It is, uh, I appreciate your support. I really do. Because I know not, this, is, this is not super interesting to everybody, but I do want to see what happens. Ooh, Thunderbolts. A10 Thunderbolts. That's kind of cool. I'm not sure that's a real Thunderbolt, but you know what? I'll take the word for it. I'll take the word for it. <sighs> Look at that debt. It's so bad. 133. Ah, it could be actually a lot worse. Minimum annual debt interest payment minus 0.66 billion. Economic collapse if you have too much debt. Eh, whatever. Docs of Darwin, and then we'll do our third eye. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Cold War Doctrine, Damage Doctrine, nice. And we'll do some Acoustic Mines. Followed up with Port Australia. Get more coastal for construction speed for 10% down there, down under. Not bad. Pretty good. Technology will be done soon as well. And... Yeah, Australia. How is Australia? Uh, it's got to be a, someone making a sub mod for Australia, right? They have no focus here, I don't think. That'd be kind of cool if they did, though. Getting a focus tree for every nation would be. Would probably like the game extremely hard, actually. <laughs> now to think of it. But that'd be cool if they did. Alright, Port Australia. And we're still at what? Significant oil concessions. Alright, yeah, that makes sense. God, I wish you could get rid of the oil crisis already. Alright, there's so nothing over there. Nothing over here. Where's the OFN? 
We're okay. We're unbreakable now. Look at that. We actually did increase it. That's really nice. Slightly more consumer goods. Slightly more political power. Not bad. Semi-modern. It's not bad either. There you go. We actually bruise himself. Fortress Australia, and we're gonna prove ourselves a little bit more with Ready and United. So add war support to every OFN nation. Very cool. No fascists. Oh, and a few commies. Oh, actually, we do have a little bit of commie communism here, or a third turn socialism. And Yaki still has a little bit of support, but that's fine, whatever. So it is August 1st, 1975. And we're gonna keep going through this path, this path, because then after that we have this normal stuff, but I don't know. We'll see what happens, I guess. You know what? Uh, you know, here's what we're gonna do. I don't wanna waste any more time. So, we're gonna read through these, and if there's any sort of thing about it, we'll talk about it, but we're pretty much done here at the end of this campaign, because I don't think there's anything else that's gonna happen, maybe. I could use cons commands, but the RDs are cowards and defeat us at heart. I'm prepared to face the threat of fascism in the 30s, unable to defeat in the 40s, and unwilling to leave the defense of what remained of the free world in the 50s and 60s. America will be made strong again and will declare that Japan's occupation of sacred American soil must end. Which technically we did already. Exercise Pakrim. To state our resolve to defend freedom is one thing, to prepare for the arduous task of doing so in a war is quite another. Liu Ofen's military readiness was sorely tested at the outbreak of the South African War against the colonial Nazi Reichs Commissariat. A war against the full might of the co-prosperity sphere will stretch it to the breaking point. Our defenses in the Pacific must be prepared now, and Australia and New Zealand made impenetrable before they are ever made necessary. Cool. Now, and I will read through these ones just because we have enough time to do so. Oh, get the Smith Doctrine, huh? We can read about that. This is the most important stuff. Over here on the right side, it doesn't really mean too much to do, because that happens for every NPP uh, campaign, I'm pretty sure. And stuff over here for the M Middle East, and stuff down for Iran. Some of it's actually a little bit bugged still, if I remember correctly, so... There's really not a huge point to do that, but the Smith Doctrine. My fellow Americans, you might ask yourself, where do we go from here? To answer you, I always find it useful to return to the beginning of our story as a nation. We hold these truths to be self-evident. All that all men are created equal, and that they are endowed by the Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. To secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it. We are a nation born from a dream of dignity, forged in revolution. We are people who would sooner die than see liberty extinguished. We believe in the universality of rights, rights that do not discriminate between color, creed, or country. We stand against any tyrant that abets just injustice and arms the helpless. So when you ask yourself, where does America go from here? I answer you that America goes forth to make good upon its first principles. From the lost ports of San Fran and L.A. to the heart, uh, heart of darkness in Tokyo, America will never lose its way again. A stirring speech set to the drum beats of war. Everyone loves it. And then protect our businesses, because we must. Military strength is but one element of national strength. The strength of a country's economy, its secure access to raw resources, the ability to manufacture critical material internally without excessive reliance on hostile partners, and the growth in capital to ensure both is an equally fundamental component of national power. And though we are forced to reach open trade with Japan and the, with the Akagi Accords, that doesn't mean we have to make it easy for them to expand the OFN ec economies. Nice. Business interests on the West Coast will help with our turn up there. Hopefully. Hopefully. That'd be really good. Come on, let's get to 76. Let's get to 76. And after this one, we'll do the Great Divide. The two factions of the NPP are playing nice for now. The relentless drive for victory in the presidential race and the drive to make a mark during the first months of the Smith presidency haven't been enough to keep everyone in line for now. But as the honeymoon period fades and the daily routine returns, the divisions within the NPP will inevitably resurface. In order to keep a working majority, we'll need to remind the party that we're better together than divided. Even though we're doing extremely well, so I don't want, I don't know why she's bringing that up, or anyone else is bringing that up, because we're doing quite well with each other right now, so. There you go, do some of that stuff. Yeah, advanced, advanced cast, nice. You can close out of that, is it really magical? Hey, almost a million, cool. Acoustic mines, cool. We actually have 5% stability. Even though we're very united, America isn't very stable still. Protect our interests. It's nice. The Great Divide. United we stand. Oops, my bad. And crack the whip. It's no surprise that not everyone is willing to play nice within the party. Politics is a rough affair at the best of times with so many ambitious and self-assured individuals seeking to make their mark on the nation. But there are always a bringing or a recalcitrant legislators in line. Or legislators. Committee positions, access to the White House, the privilege of being named a key sponsor of major legislation, and the threat to remove all of the same. Our Congress will fall in line one way or another. For the good of the party. The party would be far more supportive of our initiatives. It better be more, far more supportive. 
All right, it's getting close to December. That's good. Let's get some more PP. Good, good, good. Yeah, at this point, we can't do anything else here. Um, yeah, everyone's really happy. Divert funding to Southern States. I don't think anyone's going to really care if we do that, right? Yeah, they don't care. So this stuff is done, then. The Iran War is pretty much done as well. Actually, how is Iran doing? Oh, the Imperial State of Iran. There's a lot of resistance under Pavali. Okay, well, then no, the Einheit's back. But, for the good of the party. With the carrot and a stick firmly in hand, a reminder to the MPP to remain united in Congress have kept the worst offenders in check, but threats and incentives can only do so much. What the MPP needs for its members in Congress to believe in the party's mission, sticking with the party out of loyalty to the whole party, not to oneself or to petty factions. Only then will the MPP truly become an immovable force in Congress that the RDs will cross at their peril. Cool. And we got 11 days left for that, too. While 800 days, semi-modern multi-role, a jet aircraft that combines the attack potential of a fighter with the capabilities of a ground strike aircraft is extremely appealing to our forces. This modern aircraft will be able to replace a variety of aging aircraft variants. Wow, these guys look god-awful. Rex Commissari at Ruslan and Muscovine? Why do you have two of them here? Oh, no authority, okay. Pour en cordial les autres. Oh, after a brief morning, a morning briefing on the president's schedule, followed by a cabinet meeting, three, uh, three more meetings on the Hill, a brief lunch with the Chamber of Commerce, two briefings at the Pentagon, and a daily roundup of, of the White House staff. The chief of staff finally returned to the Oval Office, only to find President Smith glowering at the papers. I've just had about had it with this man, Smith said. Seems to think that just because he's a consideration for ambassadorship to Canada that he's running more foreign policy. The chief of staff glanced over the headline and visibly blanched. MVP representative alludes to OFN consultations on sharing nuclear weapons. Even if the ambassador to Canada runs OFN affairs, that's one heck of a headline. The chief of staff turned to Smith. He was one of the first to back you in the election, though. If we cut him loose, we, won't we start looking ungrateful? After my calls with the Japanese and Canadian ambassadors, I guess I should be grateful he didn't start a nuclear war, Smith snapped. Tell the representatives that he's out of consideration for the ambassadorship. Loose lips sink ships, and the rest of the MPP will do well to remember that. From time to time, a congressman must be punished. Kind of decimation tactics against the establishment, though. Though persuading the MPP's legislators to maintain focus is bound to be a Herculean effort, we won't have to go it alone. Every politician is accountable to get their voters, and the MPP rank and file are hardly going to be pleased if the NPP forgets about the real opposition, the, uh, the GOP and the Democrats and their craven collaboration and pursuits of power, but happy 1976, everyone. I guess, just like with 1944 elections, there's not nothing here for probably voting in a new president. Too bad we don't have no more, there's not, uh, like, the Torch of Liberty submod out at the time of this recording, but eventually it'll be out so we can explore what would uh, JFK presidency really be like, I think, in like, Ronald Reagan and... Other, you know, characters. How do we get more money? Eh, I'm not going to question it. We'll take whatever money we can get. For the good of the party. A legacy of failure. The USS Nimitz, baby. Okay, epic. Um. Death, Supreme Court Justice. Oh, another conservative. Conservatives just keep dying. Wow. A week might be a long time in politics, but the public has a longer memory, or so we hope. Who could forget the failures of the RDs in leading the nation to defeat in the war, the cravenness of the merger in 51, and the dirty tricks of the Nixon years, and the loss of the moon to the Nazis? And if they have forgotten, perhaps it's time to create a few reminders. We'll remind the American people of the establishment's failures. Nice. Improved air refueling? Seems like a pretty good idea to me. Not for you too. Semper Libre? Very cool, very cool. How are we doing for poverty? Oh, we actually maybe we'll get things done. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Legacy of failure next. So, actually, you know what? Let's see. Let's get poverty improved. That'll be the last one we do. It's improving poverty. Wait. Did this actually conclude or something? What happened in We have a Jewish Madagascar. It looks. Oh, no! That's a Madagascar administration. Wait. They're actually. What? Oh, yeah. I guess. Huh. Okay, well. And then we have Fat Forehead Milsh. Wow. That is like Kaidai Mundi from like Star Wars or something. Holy crud. And let's go with conservative. It's, it's, it's still, you know, balanced. It's now still 5 4, so that's still, still okay. Lead us forward. Who leads America forward? Not the defeatists of the Democrats, nor the opportunists of the Republicans. No, the true representatives of the American people, the conduit of a people's fear and the vessel of their dreams, are the National Progressive Party. And saddled with the weight of the hopes of millions of Americans, the party will never waver or break. And we'll remind America we are the party of progress. It's in our name the National Progressive Party. We're all progressives here, whether we like it or not. Here, let's go get some, uh, this stuff. Cool. A legacy of failure. Lead us forward. Might as well, right? 
Oh, come on, please keep going. 219. Oh, it takes so long. So long. Actually, at 25 to 50 percent, that's actually really bad. Getting down to 15 to 25 would give us 35 percent more income ra uh, rate factor. Give us 20 percent more taxable population. Uh, gives us plus 2.5 percent research speed. It will give us 10 percent more construction speed, 5 percent more stability, as well as war support, and 2.5 and percent more recruitable population factor, and 10 percent more factory output, as well as dockyard output, as well. It's not too bad. We need four months, five months to get down there. So I guess we'll keep going and see what we can do. About like a new republic, maybe? If you want to read about that, please go right ahead. Improve aerial refueling is nice to do, though. Boom, boom, boom. There you go. Spending cogs. Goodbye. We're no longer spending cogs. Yeah, there's no election for 76, which is kind of disappointing. Uh, but who cares about republicans? There you go. So this is the best time I've ever had it. When Operation Commence. Good, good job. Um, this many senators. Really, this many senators ever. Basically, 82. And we destroy the Republican Democrat Party, which is awesome. And now we are at what? 227, up, up. Uh, there will be blood. Smother the flames. Let's, let's go with there will be blood. If you want to read about this, please go ahead. Just because I think this will be okay. MCS seems like the person that, if convinced, she could she could definitely go to war. I mean, we did all the, the military stuff down here, too, so. Well done, gentlemen. Very good. Very, very good. A assessor po politics. Huh. Daily social conservative support as well as authoritarian democrat. Alright, not bad. 14 weeks left, that's not too bad. Cool. And we're not going to pause anymore. No more pausing here. If we cut that, 5 billion. Get rid of that. We would still have 14 billion over here, which is just god awful. These other expenditures, man, really cut into us. We don't have military spending, actually. I almost never do this. Do that. Then again, we can't even make new civvies, so it doesn't even matter. There you go. There will be blood. And... Well done, gentlemen. Good job. Cool. Now, do we get another one here? There you go. You do that one. And... Make ready for war. Unlocks direct material assistance decisions. Cool. Well, we'll definitely want to do that, but we're still looking at... 31.231. So we need three more months. Three more months, and then we'll call it a campaign... I think we've done pretty darn well. Let's take a look at the factions. So, OFM, Austin, Canada. Very nice. Northern uh, South America. South Africa, actually, as well. I forgot about them. Led by Sir de Villers Graf. Cool. Uh, the Jap... The Italians joined Japan, because I didn't focus on them at all. Brittany joined Germany, which is weird. And they go all the way down to the Strait of Hormuz, which is kind of... That would be kind of scary. But the Japanese are down here, too. Which would actually be very good for help the power, the balance of power in Europe, just because, even though it was not with us, with the Japanese there, the Japanese actually have a way to strike the Germans, which is probably at least okay, which is definitely okay. Alright, another month, so we got two more months left. Make ready for war. Cool, and let's see, yeah, that would be a terrifying sphere to be a part of. Absolutely terrifying. Away, nice, 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 and of course Australia, New Zealand, and parts of Madagascar. Yeah, actually, we're looking not that strong. I mean, yeah, it's America's here, but... And we have the UK, I guess. The UK and America, and I guess Canada and stuff, and the other, like, dominions, or the former dominions. I guess Germany, and their territory, and the Japanese, I mean... I don't know if America could win against a two-front war like that. That might be a bit extreme. And we got two more months. Come on, two more months. That's all we got. All we got. Actually, what do we have for social laws? Gender equality, equal rights. We got police... Capital punishment. We like capital punishment. More construction spending fa factor. Public education. It's not very good, I guess. Huh. Elite only. Public higher education. Free education. That sounds very, very expensive. We we'll grab that one. Why not? Why not? Oh, and what else do we have here? Excellent safety regulations. Nice. We have low unemployment subsidies, low pensions, illegal child labor. Darn it. Eight-hour workday. Actually, we can go to six. six we can go down to six-hour workday. Low minimum wage, tax havens, that's kind of cool. High income weighted, uh, tax, medium taxation, c civil economy. Oh, new Lafayette. That's kind of cool. We got that one done already. Make ready for war. Cool, if you want to read about that, there you go. Just like Namibia, though. Boom. And there we go, too. Nice. So what else we have here? Free trade, of course. What else we have? So we have open refugee programs. Earns our monthly poverty, universal voting. Support disenfranchised. Free press. Allowed public meetings for now. 
We outlawed slavery. What? Quota immigration. All right. All trade unions allowed. Secularism. Multi-party system. I guess. I guess technically, yeah. Multi-party system is two parties at least, at the very least. Education deferment. Wow, we already got rid of the spy on the treaty ports. That was really fast. Uh, that's not bad. Oh, there we go. Now we have toast for economists. Great. I just want to see what that does for us. But we also have integrated military, combat schooling, uh, military policing, non-combat only for women, as well as volunteer only. Which is actually not too bad. How does our army experience gain, though? Which kind of does suck. But if we were to do this, we would actually be able to cut down the debt. But, you know what? I think this video has gone on for long enough. If you enjoyed the campaign, it's really totally short. Please do consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow in another video. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.